Hi everybody, Chad German here with Utah Electrician. Another day after class, everybody's gone and I've got a free whiteboard, so I might as well take a second. Today I thought about what I could possibly teach uh, that could probably help my followers on uh, Instagram or uh, my subscribers on YouTube. Um, and a little bit about myself, I haven't got into an, uh, an introduction, but uh, I'm a commercial electrician by trade. Uh, in the last few years, I've taken over a service division for Gardner Electric here in the state of Utah. Um, but with that being said, I've ran big jobs. I've ran uh, big grocery stores. I've ran uh, Walmarts. I've ran uh, Smith's Marketplace, which is another big grocery, grocery store out here in Utah. I ran medical centers. I've ran charter schools. Uh, and I've also ran smaller little commercial jobs. Um, I've ran homes. I've ran basements. Uh, now I'm doing service calls. So I really feel like uh, through my experience in this electrical trade, I've got a, uh, a, I'm become very well-rounded. Now I've been teaching here for the last uh, uh, four or five years here at MTech. And so I could go through and teach out of this code book. Uh, I'm getting really good at the code book and even better at teaching. But one thing uh, about myself is I really love uh, this trade and uh, making money for a company is something that I've done uh, in the past running work. So with all that being said, I wanted to give you guys some codes that will allow you to make some money. I'm going to go over three codes and then I'm going to talk to the apprentices just for a second. I got to go fast because I don't want this to draw on, draw on too long and, uh, and uh, have a long video for you guys. So um, one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, this thing that's driving everybody crazy that's electricians. Now HVAC guys, they laugh at us because we have a hard time sizing something off of uh, not using the overcurrent protection device. So we're going to talk about saving money and why I think it's important on an air conditioning. Now we're beating this like a dead horse. Um, according to uh, 240.4G, okay, uh, in 240.4G, it tells us that we size our conductors to an air conditioner and different, and it sends you to 440. So 440.4 will tell us to use the nameplate rating and to use the minimum ampacity and the maximum overcurrent protection. They've done all the configuration for 100%, 125% for the continuous load. There's all, all sorts of different factors that go onto that nameplate. The manufacturer that builds that air conditioning unit has gone done and done, gone through and done all the hard hard stuff for you and it simply is the minimum opacity maybe it's 28 amps right 28 amps of minimum opacity maximum OCPD or breaker or fuse uh, 50 amps so naturally as an electrician we're going to go get a number six or number eight and put that uh, depending on the uh, degree column that the, the the column that we would use on 310.16 in the 2020 code book. But um, we would go and, and size this. Um, if you use a six degree column, you're going to use number six. If you use a 75 degree column, you're going to use number eight, according to overcurrent protection. But in this situation, we're allowed by code to use the minimum ampacity, which at 28 amps, we can put a number 10 gauge wire. So my big, the biggest response I get from most people is, well, why, uh, why would I go get a number 10 when I, if I put a number eight on it, it's not a big deal. Now I've ran a lot of work, right? And when I've got rooftop units on top of a grocery store or a, a medical center, and I've got to take three phase power and it's three phase 50 amp, and I go pull a number eight, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But I'm going to tell you one thing on my Connex, I do not have spools of number eight. I have spools of number 12, I have spools of number 10. And if I've got a bunch of number eight going to rooftop units, I'm going to pull my wire, I'm going to have my pipe, I'm going to take the time to suck in a string and or push a push, fish tape and pull in a string. And then I'm going to pull truce tape to, through to make sure that I can get my wire cuts long enough to uh, go to those rooftop units. And then you go sit there and take all take half a day pulling all that through and then writing it all down, sending it to the parts store. Wire cuts aren't the fastest thing at the parts store. So those guys are over there trying to cut wire, 
In the meantime, you're allowed to use number 10s by code. Uh, you're going to have in rust current happening that has to be protected. That's why it's at 50 amps. You're going to have 125%. You don't need to size off this overcurrent protection. You size off the minimum opacity, and you're allowed to, down, to have that wire size there at a number 10. I've got spools, 500 foot spools in my Connex all day long. I don't need to go through and pull any true tape. I don't need to go through and get a measurement. I don't need to go through and put wire cuts and make a parts list. I go get those, put it on my reel, pull it through, land them, save money. So that's number one code I wanted to go over to save money with you guys. Uh, another code that I want to talk to you guys about that's a big deal, uh, especially on uh, bigger jobs. Okay, um, this big thing with guys doing co work above code, that's great. The code's a minimum standard. We all agree that if you want to put a strap on your EMT every foot, that's fine. Go for it. I had a customer the other day say, can you put a strap everywhere there's a joist because I like the way it looks instead of just random? Fine. I'll go ahead and do that. There's no code that says I shouldn't. But here's where uh, this code here, or there, here's where a code with the minimum standard actually will save you a boatload of money, okay? Now, when I'm running big jobs, there's other guys in the companies, they're running big jobs, and ultimately, the guy that makes the most money gets the biggest bonus at the end of the year, and if their con economy fails, he, uh, you know, he keeps his job. So, ultimately, that's what I want to teach you guys. 300.5 is a, ta there's a table, and it's for um, direct burial of conduit. The, the big thing I hear with my competition on these jobs is the deepest I got to go off that table is 24 inches. And I am going to do stuff over code because that's how I do things. In reality, what he's done is he's passed his journeyman test and he doesn't want to read this anymore. He throws it in the back of his truck and he just does everything above code. And I'm in the, in the code book and I'm making more money because I'm using the code book. So 300.5, if it's under concrete and there's no truck, tra truck traffic, I can go six inches underneath. I don't have to go 24 inches. So when they spray down six inches of gravel before they put the concrete, I'm over there with rakes going down. In fact, I love underground. I save a ton of money on underground doing pipes from my, my distribution out to different areas to bring my home runs. So I'm, cause I'm also chasing deadlines, right? I'm gonna chase deadlines because I gotta get out of the walls, and then I got a ceiling inspection, then I got power to panel inspection, and then I got a rough, a rough inspection, I got final. I got all these inspections I gotta make. If I can get wires, or if I can get pipes underground to certain locations, I'm not having guys try to pipe above head and try to beat this above, above the grid ceiling. Uh, plus, I'm uh, sorry, above grid inspection. Plus, I've gotta rent a lift, or if my company has a lift, I'm charging lifts every night. The company had to pay for the lift. If I can get stuff underground to go to certain locations and do my home runs, I have a guy on a ladder and he's feeding wire and I got a guy in electrical room, he's pulling wire. And I'm already well above this above, above grid inspection. So that's very important to know that underground will save you money. Number two is if I'm gonna go rent a, rent a mini X or if I have a mini X and I'm gonna go sit and pour fuel in it and pay a guy to sit in there and run a mini X and dig 24 inches deep, unless it's spec, why are you doing that? When all you have to do is rake back all that gravel and you can throw your pipe down, run the pipe. Now, every code I hear, I hear this, I hear this thing where guys say, well, what if a, a guy comes with a, after with a core cutter or a, a concrete cutter and cuts the thing because there's a mistake and they're going to fix plumbing and they hit your pipes, okay? Well, what if a parking lot light out in the, out in the parking lot gets hit by a semi? Like, we do our installations according to code, and if something happens to it, then something happens to it. There's anything that we could put in and electrically, uh, there could be an earthquake right now and these lights fall down. Hopefully the seismic wires on them, right? But anything could happen to compromise the electrical system. That's not why we do things. So 300.5, if I know I only have to go six inches deep, I can get a lot more underground done at a lot faster pace with a lot less money. I don't have to have two, three mini X's on the job digging 24 inches deep to try to get my conduit to then put a ribbon and then put a, just draw it down, make some money, okay? So that's that's a couple codes to make money. This, this video is gonna go long, so I'm not gonna get into the next code. I'll actually do a video specifically on the next code called a feeder tap. 
okay? That's in 240, uh, 240.21. That's gonna take a little bit longer to go over those things. But what I wanna go over right now is mentality of a foreman and then mentality of an apprentice. Okay, when I was an apprentice, I wanted to be the best. Uh, the owner of the company I worked for was actually my foreman and he was the best and I wanted to be the best. So I wanted to be around him all the time. He was a hard guy to work for because if he knew he had potential, he was harder on you than if he didn't like it, he didn't care, right? So one day we're driving and uh, we're going to lunch and I've been probably, I don't remember how motivated I was before lunch, but we're sitting there, there was somebody in the middle, I can't remember who it was, I'm on the far side and Brandon's on the left and we're just driving and he goes, Chad, you know, those rooms that you're putting outlets in, uh, I did them in nine minutes. I did all those outlets in nine minutes um, and you're pulling about 25 minutes in each room to put those outlets in. You should at least be able to get down to 15 minutes. He challenged me to get to 12 minutes and I thought, dang, if he's doing them in nine minutes, I want to do them in seven. I don't, I know he's a journeyman. I want to do them in seven if he's doing them in nine because I want to keep my job and he's over here to tell me try to do 15 minutes and I'm over here at 25 minutes. So I was, I was really stressed and that whole lunch I ate and I was thinking about it and I came back to work motivated. I, we were doing a charter school and it was a whole upstairs on a charter school. I came back, threw my devices down. I ran through the school throwing devices down to every single outlet. Now, if I'm a foreman now, I'm going to get mad at a guy for doing that because if you don't get it done, you're going to have to go now back through and pick up all those outlets. But my brain wasn't that way. It was like, I'm going to get these in. So after lunch, I come back, throw those down. I start running. I slide down from one outlet to the next. I'm putting them in. I have my phone. I, char I, I check my time. I wasn't coming anywhere close to 15 minutes. I was 20 minutes, 19 minutes. Or sorry, yeah, 19 minutes. 15, or I never got to even 15 minutes. I got to one room that had a few outlets and I got out of there in like 11 minutes. I got the whole floor done and I had never met my goal. I was so disappointed. I put my phone in, I put my tools away. Gardner comes walking up and he's looking around and he's got a smile on his face and he goes, who did you have help you? And I said, nobody, I did it myself, man, but I couldn't get my time down. I, I, I timed myself over and over and I never got the time. And I'm like, he, and he just started laughing and I was like, what dude, like, this sucks. Maybe I shouldn't even be an electrician, man. And he goes, Chad, I was joking. I was so mad at him. He, he was amazed that I got a whole floor done, trimmed out after lunch. Um, so that night I remember driving home, I had a little hatchback Honda Civic. I pulled up in front of the house turn off the key and I went to get out of my car and when I got out of the car my legs totally gave out from underneath me because I was so tired and I got up and it taught me a lesson in leadership um, you cannot motivate somebody that means to make somebody move Brandon couldn't make somebody move but what Brandon does very well and what I hope I do is create an atmosphere in which people can be their best because I can't make anybody move I have an 18 year old and sometimes he's motivated. He does things. Sometimes I try to make him do something. He won't. So the best thing to do is to create an atmosphere in which people can be their best. And if they're not going to be their best, you remove them from the situation, right? So that's one thing uh, with leadership. I want to talk, hopefully, to the apprentices here. And I want you to remember the day you got hired, okay? The day you got hired, uh, you went and got a haircut, you showed up and you were dressed nice and you were nervous and you sat there and your boss said, okay, you're going to start. You have no experience. Oh, you're a quick learner. That's good. Do you show up on time? Okay. You show up on time. That's good. Um, you work hard. Okay. And you pick up on things. Good. Okay. Well, we're going to start you at 12 bucks an hour, 13 bucks an hour. And you say, oh, I got the job. Sweet. Yeah, I'll take that money. Great. And you move out in, you know, and you start in two weeks or the next day or whatever it may be. And the first day on the job, you see a dude sitting there and he's smoking a cigarette and he's got his phone out and he's playing on his phone and you walk up all excited and you say, hey man, how's it going? Good. Foreman's over there. Oh, really? Uh, how long you been doing this? Two days. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, how much do they pay you? 18. All of a sudden your mind goes to I'm underpaid. And you go, I'm not worth 12, I'm worth more than 12 or 13 bucks an hour. 
Let's stop that in your mind and realize whatever that guy did in the interview, he did better than you. Maybe he has more experience than you, but for sure he's overpaid. You don't want to be overpaid. You want to earn things. So if you get a good foreman and you're wanting to learn, if you learn quick, you show up on time and you work hard, those are the things you agreed to do for $13 an hour. In order to get more than that, you stay a little bit extra. You work overtime. You're asking questions. You're going to electrical school. You're buying electrical books to educate yourself, to put yourself above where the boss is expected you to be. So with that being said, I just kind of wanted to spend a second to talk to you guys today about the mentality of a true electrician. And the mentality of a real electrician is you're gonna get the job done, you're gonna work hard, and you don't just install electrical components. You're an electrician. You don't go to school for four years and sleep, blame your teachers for having a bad education, go to a test that has a 30% pass rate, fail it, give up on it, or even then you pass it and you throw your code book in the back of the truck. And then all of a sudden you do work uh, better than the code or above the code, which means you're, you're not making money. Because I'm telling you, when I got through and I got my journeyman, this is 2017 edition, 2020 is coming up. When I got my journeyman, there was so much more in this book today than there was when I got my journeyman license. I'm a master electrician. Now there's so much more today in the 2020 code book than there was when I got my master's license. So we're in a, in a, in a, we are in an industry that is evolving. And if we are evolving, we have to evolve with it. If not, we're, we're not relevant anymore. And we're honestly just made, we're just losing money. But everybody thinks they're worth another dollar. So if you think you're worth another dollar, make sure you are worth another dollar. Spend extra time to educate yourself. People ask me all the time with my consulting business, what makes you capable enough to do a consulting business? other electricians that don't keep relevant on this. I teach all the time. I teach, uh, I teach continuing education. Now there's a lot of electricians and I, I taught some electrical engineers. Those guys are definitely, they're top notch guys, but there's a lot of electricians that show up to a code class without a code book. Doesn't make sense. A lot of guys. And so um, that's, what's going to make a guy like myself relevant. I'm teaching four nights a week. I'm teaching first year. I'm teaching fourth year. Um, I'm working hard. I've got my master's license. I've, I've got a tray. I've got a career where I've been all over the place in the industry. So that's what makes me more relevant than the average guy. But that took time, effort. We are all a product of where we put our time. If you don't put time into where you're going, you're just going to go nowhere. If you want to go somewhere, spend time to do it. And if you think you're going to get somewhere off of clocking in and clocking out after eight hours, I beg to differ because you have somebody else that's competing against you, whether you believe it or not, that is putting in more hours, putting in more time, paying attention at school, listening to videos. Uh, you're watching this video because you want to be educated. So hopefully I could help you guys a little bit today uh, and on this video with maybe somewhere where you might be lacking. Again, your boss can't motivate you. Your wife can't motivate you. Your husband can't motivate you. Nobody else can motivate you. That means to make you move. You have to make yourself move. You have to be self-motivated and you have to go after out there and get it. So I'm doing three jobs right now at 42 years old. In fact, I don't think I've ever had less than two jobs in 20 years. Maybe when I went through apprenticeship, uh, the apprenticeship, I uh, had one job as an electrician and then I went to school full-time or in an electrical program, but I was also doing extra hours. So I am not a product of somebody that just barely passed tests. I'm a product of somebody that loves this trade and spends a lot of hours getting better and better and better at this trade. And it's not because I'm better than anybody. It's because I'm going to outwork whoever my competition is. So I hope that helps you guys. And I hope uh, you get motivated for yourself to go out there and become the best electrician you can. Thank you guys and have a wonderful day.